Hi there and welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, what I'm working on today is a video that's basically an addendum video or an appendix video to uh, part four of my digital negative series that you can see up here right now. Now uh, in part four I show you how to use um, Richard Boatwell's Quick Curve DN program to um, create correction curves uh, for printing in your alternative processes um, in making digital negatives. Now um, in that process and in that video uh, and in other videos, I've showed you how to do this uh, calibration by reading your step wedge. You know, you've got to print out your own 21, um, 21 step step wedge throughout the process, which you'll see in that section of videos. Um, anyway, you have this 21 step wedge that you've printed out, and what you want to do is you want to correct this against a target step wedge. So rather than the old way of doing it by taking, uh, putting it on a flatbed scanner and just reading each step individually, writing them down, creating a text file, which then I have to convert using another tool into a data text file, this eliminates all that and makes it much easier. Now you still have to use a scanner to scan this step wedge, but, um, but this makes it much more uh, simple and a little bit more exact and you'll be able to actually create a little bit better a curve. So, where we're going to go with this now is I have to take you to download the program. Now, uh, the Step Wedge program is actually a Photoshop script. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be loading that into Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to have to open a few things up here and get us ready to go. Now, as you can see over here on the screen, I've already taken and I've scanned my 21-step wedge. I'm saving a little bit of time doing that. Now, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your 21-step wedge. You're going to scan it on your flatbed scanner. No adjustments whatsoever. Just scan it as a nice flat scan at 300 dpi. Save it as a TIFF file um, someplace where you know where it is. Um, get it open on your Photoshop uh, program. And as you can see here, I want you to take it and orient it to the lightest uh, steps to the left, going all the way to the right in the darkest steps. Um, then you're going to have to go up here. And once you've got it open, you go to image mode. And I want to make sure that you have it set at grayscale. Now, it will ask you if you want to discard color layers, and you say yes. You definitely want a grayscale to work with. Now, let's go back over here to, um, to uh, QTR. Now, you'll go to quadtonerip.com, uh, or just look up Quadtone Rip on, on um, Google. You're going to open up that, pro, uh, that web page, and you're going to go down here over on the left where it says Downloads. Now, I want you to hit that, and then you go down low, down about midway down the page here, and you're going to see QTR Step Wedge Tool, Zip. Now, this is the tool that we're going to be using. Now, I want you to just download that. It'll put it up in your Downloads folder. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to open up my Downloads folder. And here you can see that it's downloaded it, and it's created a completely different, um, a completely new folder. Now, if you go here and you see QTR Step Wedge Tool, you're going to open it up, and in that folder, you're going to see three files. Now, it's going to, you're going to have your Step Wedge Tool, which is a, uh, um, the, the Step Wedge Tool, which is a JSX file. That's a, uh, a script file that you're going to put into Photoshop. It comes with the Step Wedge Tool PDF, which are instructions, which are basically following the instructions that I'm doing right now. They're very good instructions, and if you get lost in my video, Go through and read them, and between the two of us, you're going to figure this out. Uh, and it also has the 21-step um, the, uh, target uh, step wedge that you're going to want. Now, what I want you to do with that right now is take that and open it up. Just drag it down here onto your Photoshop and open it up in Photoshop. And you can see it's much like the step wedge that we've already done over here, which we've put into the, uh, the horizontal format with the lightest steps on the left. Now we've got the same thing there, okay? Now, what I want you to do is just keep these two files open from right now. From right now, we're going to be coming back to this in a little bit, creating a new file and copying these both into that new file. Now, first, I want to show you what to do with the um, with the JSX file, the actual script tool. Now, you're going to go in here and go over to your file, your finder, and go to your applications. And just go on down and find your Photoshop uh, application. In this case, I'm using Adobe Photoshop uh, 2021. You go over here to your folder that are presets, and you open up that, pro that folder. And on down you'll go, and you're going to get down here, and you're going to find scripts. Now, I want you to take that JSX file 
that we downloaded today and I want you to copy that over into your scripts file. Now I've already gone ahead and done this and you can see it shows up down here as QTR Step Wedge Tool. Now, uh, what you're going to want to do after you've done this process is go back in and maybe shut down Photoshop again, restart it so it knows where that tool is. Now, we're going to go back over to Photoshop now and this is where I want you to create the new file. Now, the original target step wedge that they give you is a 360 DPI file. Now, what I want you to do is create a new file that is uh, 360 DPI as well. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say file new. It's going to open up our, uh, our dialog page here and we're going to go down here to, um, to our resolution. We're going to say 360 DPI. Now I'm going to shift it over to inches and the original one is, is eight inches wide. I'm going to make one that's nine inches just to give us some, uh, some space. So I'm going to go a width of nine inches and I'm going to go a height of two inches. And then I'm going to create that new file. And as you can see, we've got the new file here. Now, what I want you to do is go back over to the target step wedge that came with the step wedge tool. And I want you to go up here to select all. And we are going to say copy. Now, I want you to copy that out of there. And we're going to go back up and we're going to open up our new file, untitled. And we're going to paste it in there. So I like to say uh, command V to paste that in there. Now, what I'm going to do is take the move cursor. And we're going to move it up a little bit there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is go back over to our, um, our step wedge that we've scanned. And I'm going to also say select all, and I'm going to say copy. Now we're going to go back over again to the new file that we're creating. And we're going to command V that into there. We're going to drop it down into this image. Now we're going to drop it down uh, a little bit farther, as you can see here. And then I'm going to go up here to uh, layers and I'm going to say flatten layers, flatten image. Now I'm going to save this as a new file. Okay. We have to do that before we run the script. So we're going to go down here. We're going to say save as. Uh, I'm going into the QTR step wedge uh, tool folder that was set up when we downloaded it. I'm going to create a new folder in there. And that new folder I'm just going to call step wedge scans. Okay, so I've got that new folder there of step wedge scans. Now I'm going to save this, this step wedge that I've just uh, done the new one or the, the new one that I've done with the two with the target and, and the one that we've created. I'm going to call this uh, step one TIFF. Okay. We're going to save that in there and we're going to save it with no compression. Okay. So now we have that new file saved. Now this is where it comes into the point where we're going to run this. We're going to run our um, step wedge tool that we've just loaded into Photoshop. So what I want you to do first is go here to the uh, rectangular masking tool and we're going to bring it over here. And you can see here where it says beginning here. I'm going to close this window here. You can see where it says beginning and it says end here. Now where we want to start is right here at this first bar and our step zero. And we're going to go up to step 100. So what I'm going to do is right at the beginning, I'm going to start out here and I'm going to start creating my, um, my masking here. No. We've got the selection tool. I take it all the way to the end of the last one and I let go. Now what I'm going to do is go up here to file. We're going to go down here to scripts. And if you can see over here, you've added your script in here and here I've got step wedge tool here. Now it might come up that it's not in your initial menu to choose. So what you would do in that case is go down here to browse. It would open up a window that would show you all of your scripts and you would just choose this script, this step wedge tool. But I've got it right here. So I'm going to choose that. And what that's going to do now, it's going to open up another dialogue window. And in this window, it may open up on yours when you first done it as 20 steps. We want to change that to 21 steps because we're reading a 21 step file to do this. 
Okay? Now, down here, it shows us on the, the left, it shows us the step number. Now, I want you to put in here to make this correct, uh, to, to make the correct calibrations and the correction curves correct, I want you to start off with your, might, uh, your white, your D minimum at zero. I want to go to the middle gray at 10, and I want to go to the black, the D max at 20, okay? Now, over on the right column, you're going to have lab values. But the same. So in the lab values, I want you to set up 97 for the white. I want you to set up 54 for the middle gray and set up 11 for your black. Okay? Now, then run calibrate. And what's going to happen is it's starting to run the script now. And it's setting up here. As you can see, it's set up a little square on each one of the steps. And it's read them all. Now, you say continue. Now, what this does is it now is giving you your target. It gives you your target readings. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to use the, the rectangular selection tool again. You're going to go down here to the step uh, wedge that you've scanned. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to start right here at the very first square. Skip this out here and skip this out here. You're just going to do this very first square. You want the 21 steps in here. So we're once again going to select that area and I'm going to drag my cursor on along and we're going to go up to the black and we're going to keep it right there, let go, okay? Now what we're going to do is go back over here and we're going to run that script one more time. So we go down here to scripts, we go to QTR step wedge tool. Now this time it's not going to open up the big dialog window that it did before. All it's going to do is give you the read data mode and it's going to give you the number of wedges in the step. So, a number of steps in the wedge. So what we're going to do is, once again, choose 21 like we did before. Now we're going to say read steps. Now it's going through its calculations. And what it does now is it's created um, a file which shows us our readings off of the step wedge that we had, it, uh, that we made ourselves. It's showing the target density and it's created a data file now. What we're going to do is we're going to save this data file Save that data file. So now I'm going to go back up here to my step wedge tool folder where we've created the, the, uh, the, wet, the step wedge scans folder. I'm going to create a new folder in here. And in that, we're going to call it the data text file folder. All right. Now in that folder is where we're going to save step one text, which is the, text, the data text file that we've just created. Now we'll save that in there. And now we have that data text saved. Now, I again use Richard Boltwell's um, Quick Curve DN program. So what this does is this is not now my measurement file. Now I'm going to take that measurement file and I'm going to export that or open it up in the uh, Quick Curve DN um, uh, program. Now, you can go back to the video uh, for that right now, uh, which is up here. And, um, but what I'm going to do is show you what that will actually happen. So I'm opening up the uh, Richard Boatwell's program. I'm going over here to linearization. Now in the linearization section, you'll see over here, open measurement file. Now that's the file that we just created. So I'm going to open that measurement file. I'm going to go up here. We have our data text files and in there I have step one text. So I'm going to open that. And what that's going to do now here, you can see is it shows me the squiggly line here on the top, which I'm very close on this, this is my starter curve, and that's one great thing about Richard's program is it helps you create starter curves that are very close to the final curve that you're going to be using. So what it does is it shows you here, the squiggly line is showing me my actual curve that I created here, that's this uh, step wedge, and the green line is the target, that's where, it wants, that's where I want to be. So what I do then is in Richard's program, I would go here to open up the quad file that I'm correcting, and that will give me the correction for which I can create a new quad file, which I will open up again when I print my negatives. The next time I will print the step wedge once again through QTR. I will have a new step wedge that I'll test and I'll run through this process once again. And that will hone me down in and get my, my curve line straighter. So anyway, this is how you use step wedge tool. It's very good. It's pretty precise. It seems to work really well. It usually only takes me about two iterations when I'm going through the Quick Curve DN program to get myself uh, a good profile for a curve, uh, for actually a perfect curve. Uh, and I highly, I highly recommend this. So uh, 
I uh, hope you'll go through, download the program off of the QTR website and, uh, and try this out for yourself, all right? So uh, if you like this and you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already done that. Um, you can look below and you'll find the links for the different programs that I'm working with here today. And uh, anyway, head on back over to the, uh, the step four of the Digital Negative series and uh, this ought to help you get, get, uh, get situated and get yourself a nice corrected curve, all right? So thanks very much and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.